this is a five minute with Eric. And what we're talking about is legal due diligence and actually due diligence in general. So first let's talk about what is due diligence. Uh, here's the fact pattern. You're going to be buying into an existing business and you want to make sure you're making a good investment, right? So before you give the money, you're probably going to ask some questions. And a lot of times they're going to make you sign an NDA. That's a non-disclosure agreement. And there's usually a time frame. So we'll say, Hey, give us 30 days. Um, you might have to pay a good faith deposit, um, which you may or may not be able to get back. And then you'll be able to go look at the books and records, kick the tires, so to speak. And when I think about the due diligence, I think about two different sides. I think about legal due diligence and I think about financial and accounting due diligence. So let's talk about the financial and accounting first. So you're buying a business and they say, oh, my business is worth $1 million. And the kind of the, the question is, well, how do you know, right? Is that just pie in the sky? Are you just making it up? Have you done a valuation? And so most valuations of small to medium sized closely held businesses, these are businesses that are not publicly traded. There's no active market, right? I can tell you exactly how much Apple computers is worth because there's a market on the New York Stock Exchange and I can go and look, okay, they've got 10 million shares and they're selling at X dollar per share. That's the value of the company. Um, whereas a small company, there's no market like that. So what a lot of times we'll do is you'll work with an accountant and the accountant, what they, what they have is categories of industries and they'll say, oh, you're a law firm. Well, generally we value law firms in your segment at one and a half times gross revenue, right? So it's going to be what's called a, a, a formula, um, a multiple. So it could be a multiple of profits. It could be a multiple of revenue. It could be a multiple of EBITDA, which stands for earnings before interest, depreciation, and taxes. Um, and so these multiples are, are a guess you know, think about it. If you're selling, you want a high price. If you're buying, you want a low price. But where the, where the accounting due diligence really comes into play is if they say, hey, we had a million dollars of revenue last year, it's like, well, did you really? And I remember once we were helping a guy buy a used car dealership and the accountant for the business admitted that all of the books and records were fake because he just does whatever he can so that the owner pays as little in taxes but trust me, the revenues were in reality much higher. And I told my client, I'm like, you don't walk away, run away, right? Because not only are we potentially buying a business that's not worth what they say it's worth and the revenues are impossible to verify, but what if we're buying a tax liability? What if we're buying an audit from the IRS? So the accountants are going to want access to the tax returns. They're going to want to look at the books and records. They might want to look at the ledger. Um, if it's a business that's very cash heavy business, then we got to take it with a much bigger grain of salt. If it's a business that's very easy to verify, all the transactions are online or are, are they're all credit cards, then that's much easier to verify. And then also a lot of times the reason we don't use profit as our number is because profit is so easy to manipulate by the owners, right? And the owner might be using the company credit card to go out to lunch and taking the family on vacation, but calling it a business trip. And so there's a lot of ways to manipulate the, the, the expenses of the company to reduce profit. And maybe they're doing that intentionally because they want to pay less taxes, right? And they're, they're willing to take their chances with the IRS, um, inflate their expenses, have lower profit. But then when I come along and I want to buy the business, they're like, Oh, well, our profit margin is 10%, but it's really 25%. And I was like, okay, well then I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. So that's half. Now, first of all, lawyers are probably not qualified. Now I, I, I can work my way around a balance sheet and a profit and loss statement, but I'm not qualified to tell you if it, if it's fraudulent um, or, you know, I can tell you if I see necessarily big red flags. Now on the lawyer side, on the legal side, we're going to want to look at things like all the contracts, right? And so we, we can literally get a list of all their contracts with their vendors, landlord contracts. This comes up a lot. I remember once we were looking to buy a restaurant and we got our hands on the lease and the lease had one year left on it with no option to renew. And the, we reached out to the landlord. The landlord was not willing to extend it. Well, a lot of times the value of a restaurant is going to be in the location, the regulars, the people that know it's there and they want to go there again. And so if all of a sudden we're going to have to move in a year to a new location and basically start from scratch, that is definitely going to change the value of that business. So we're going to want to look at the lease, maybe do some negotiating with the landlord. We're going to want to look at the employee situation. And by the way, have they been misclassifying employees as independent contractors, right? And so from the legal due diligence, we're looking at everything. Now let's get to the, the point of my, of this video. So if you're buying a business for not that much money, 
you're probably not going to do that much due diligence and you probably can't afford to, or to put it another way, it's probably not worth it, right? If you're buying a business for $100,000, you're probably not going to spend $10,000, one tenth of the purchase price on the due diligence to make sure that it's, that everything's good. Now, if you're buying a business for $10 million, yeah, you're going to spend a lot of money on due diligence. You're going to make sure that the numbers are right. You're going to make sure that there aren't hidden liabilities. You're going to make sure that, you know, we were back to the restaurant. We were buying a restaurant. We asked them point blank. We're like, are there any liens or fines on this property or on this business? And they lied to us and they said no. And if we had just taken it at face value, we, we would have gotten our, our client into a lot of trouble. Well, fortunately, we did our due diligence and we found three pending lawsuits, three liens from the city, a tax issue, a health inspection that was open. And these were all things that were not disclosed by the seller that if my client had not paid for us to do the due diligence, they wouldn't have found out. And I, I'm gonna tell you the truth. We told our client to walk away from that deal, which, which raises a very important point. The lawyer's job is not to tell you you have a good deal and pat you on the back and say, oh, you're so, you're so smart. The lawyer's job is to find problems and then you make an educated guess, or I'm sorry, decision notwithstanding these problems, is it worth it for me to buy? And a lot of times like we find the problems and then you can negotiate the purchase price down. Or in our case, you find the problems and you're like, no, this is not worth it. We need to walk away. And so my client was kind of grumbling about how they paid us all this money to find all those problems. And I'm like, it sounds like money well spent. It sounds like you should be thanking me for not having you waste any more money, right? Because the 10,000 he spent on us is nothing compared to the 2.7 million he was going to spend on a restaurant that potentially had at least that much in legal liabilities that we wouldn't have found out about if we hadn't gone digging. So guys, that's the point of due diligence. It's to find out if there's problems. It's not to find out if it's a good deal. And if it's a small deal, maybe you just, you know, cover your eyes and take a chance. And maybe it's worth taking a risk for a hundred thousand with not that much due diligence. If it's a big deal, then you would be foolish not to have someone there to protect you and to do the due diligence and make sure you're, you're, you're at least not buying yourself a problem. Um, if you guys have any questions or concerns or, or thoughts about this topic, please leave a comment below and I'll be sure to reach out to you. Thanks.